our main activity would be to come up with the design of the physical classes. And our starting point is the conceptual classes and relationships between them. We did the analysis last week and we came up with uh, the conceptual classes, member, book, and library. So there were three conceptual classes, if you recall. We had a relationship between member and book, and that was Boros. And we also had a relationship between member and book called holds. And they are actually relationships, but we need to view them as conceptual classes. The reason being those relationships actually have some attributes. So we could think of them as conceptual classes. But then there are relationships between library and member and library and book. A library stores the list of members and library stores a list of books. And what you will find typically is that not all conceptual classes will end up being physical classes. And some of the relationships will end up as physical classes and some of the relationships will be represented using attributes so let's take a look at all these things oh one thing one other thing that i forgot there will be classes that we add that are not here at all and as you will see even after design, we may not get all the classes taken care of. We might act actually have more classes added at the time of implementation because we are not perfect. So we do make uh, mistakes. We don't foresee everything. And then we might need to have uh, extra classes added at the time of implementation. So in some sense, we could probably coin the term the design classes, that is classes that we come up with at the design stage. So there's, they are the physical classes, but then there will be in the future implementation classes. There will not be many, but there will be some. So let's look at the conceptual classes and relationships and see what we could uh, come up with for physical classes as a starting point at least. Let's look at member and book. Well, uh, they are obviously conceptual classes and we can't really think of a reason why they wouldn't be physical classes. We have to represent every member. We have to remember the information about every member. So without having a class, without having those objects, to represent members, we can't really run this system. We can't really run the library. So we need a class to produce members. Similarly, we need a class that can be instantiated to produce the book objects. So these two should really be there. We have the conceptual class library and we could Think of uh, having such a class in our system that provides the typical functionality of a library, like adding members or adding uh, books, issuing books, placing holes, etc. So we can think of there being a library class that coordinates all the activities of the various objects. And what about borrows and hold? Obviously they came up uh, as relationships, but we gave them um, or we represented them by boxes with attributes in the conceptual class diagram when a 
person, where I mean a member borrows a book, there is a due date. So that is an attribute of borrows. When a member places a hold on a book, there is a duration. That is an attribute. So the question is, do we need to have physical classes for these? Well, um, Boros is a one-to-many relationship from member to book. That is, one member can borrow multiple books, but a single book cannot be borrowed by multiple members. And whenever you have one-to-many relationship, you can represent that without actually having a physical class. It would be a good idea to reduce the number of classes, but of course you should not sacrifice things like cohesion and uh, other aspects, encapsulation and so on. So you should not uh, be focusing on just minimizing the number of classes, but that is an important consideration, reducing the number of classes. So we can actually not have this Boros uh, class as a physical entity. But what about hold? It is a many to many relationship between member and book because the same book can be held by multiple members and a member can hold multiple books. So also for every hold, there is a duration. Without having an extra physical class to represent that association between a member and a book, it would be pretty hard to come up with a viable design. So we would think that hold is going to be a physical class. So among these five, Boros goes out and the other four stay. What about these relationships between library and member? A library needs to store members. It is best to represent this as a collection class because then we can have methods that are tailored for our environment. Similarly, between library and book, the library maintaining a collection of books, we can have a member class, sorry, a collection class that will be very tuned to our needs. So we are going to have two collection classes here to store the list of members and the list of books. It is important to come up with a list of physical classes at the outset because what we are going to do next is actually draw the sequence diagrams. At that time, we have to have some idea as to what the physical classes are because we need to put the objects that play a role in the realization of a use case in a sequence diagram. So we have to have some ideas as to what the physical classes are. We will start with them and then we might see that uh, some of these are not probably great ideas. So we may have to revise our list, but we have to have something to start with. All right, so we will, let's assume that we are going to have member book library hold library and member, or maybe we can have a collection clause called member list and library and book, that relationship can be stored as a collection clause called catalog. That is how we start. <laughs> 